Hi there, my name is Hermano and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Debian Linux on a virtual machine. It's going to be a fairly quick video, I'm not going to spend too much time on the details here, so if you're interested you'll just have to follow along. If you want me to do a more in-detail video, let me know and I'll do that. So let's get started. First thing first, let's go to the Debian website. It's debian.org. So here's the website and it's fairly simple, but it's not that easy to navigate because you don't really understand where you have to go. So the first thing I want to point out here is that you can download a network installer directly from here, or you can go to the getting Debian link and choose another option here. Now pay attention to the fact that if you're installing this on your computer and not in a virtual machine, you'll have to choose the right image for that. If you have a laptop with an NVIDIA graphic card or other hardware which might not be supported by Debian, you might have to really dig into the website and look for a non-free ISO image of Debian. So in this case, if you want to just install very quickly, you just try one of these two options here, complete installation image or try Debian Live before installing. And when you click on one, you basically can choose your architecture uh, if you want to download it via HTTP or via BitTorrent. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose AMD64. And then scrolling down, you could choose basically your flavor of Debian. So as you see, we have Cinnamon, GNOME, KDE, LXDE, and so on. Uh, however, here on the top, there is a section saying non-free software. This is where you want to download the ISO image if you have a video card like NVIDIA or other hardware which might not be supported by Debian, as Debian comes normally with most free drivers for and free software. So in this case, you want to click on this link here, and then you want to click on this link here, 10.1.0 live non-free. Then choose your architecture and go to the ISO hybrid or BitTorrent hybrid if you have BitTorrent. And here you can choose your flavor of the non-free Debian version. But I go back to the home page here because I want to install actually Debian with a net installer so that I can choose myself which software I want to install when I install it. So I've already actually downloaded this uh, ISO image here. It's about 360 megabytes, so it's fairly small. So the next step is going to be to start up VirtualBox. And I'm going to minimize this window. And I'll click on the new button here and start with the name. So I'm going to call it Debian 10 and the system recognized correctly that it's a Debian 64-bit. I'm going to give it a bit more memory, so I'm going to give it like 4 gigabytes and I want to create a virtual hard disk now. I click Create and by default it's going to give me 8 gigs. I'm going to go up to 32 and click Create. This is a VDI by the way and I'll let it this way. It's a virtual box disk image. And then I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to tweak some things here. So under system and processor, I'm going to give a little bit more power to this beast. So to be two processors and under display, I'm going to give it a little bit more video RAM and enable 3D acceleration. I'm going to go also to the storage here, controller IDE, click on empty and select the image that I downloaded. So I'm going to click on that and click open. And that's it. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click Start. And I'm going to minimize this window here. So I'm just going to go with Graphical Install here. And I'm going to choose English as a language, so I'm just going to click Continue. Location, well, I'm going to choose here United States for this purpose, although I'm not in the United States right now and key map to use for the keyboard. I'm going to select Swiss German as I have a Swiss German keyboard. And now the installer is going to basically detect all components in the virtual machine and try to configure them appropriately. So that might take a minute or two. So the network is now configured as well, and the installer asks me the name of the machine, basically the host name. I'm going to leave it to Debian. No, actually not. I'm going to change it to Buster. Why not? And click Continue. Domain name, I'm going to leave that empty. I don't need that. And now I can enter the root password. So I'm going to do that. 
and click continue. And the full name of the new user, that's going to be me. And account is fine and my password. And click continue. On the clock, I'm going to say Eastern is fine for this example. And now we are going to partition the disk and install the system. So I'm going to use the entire disk for this demo. That's the only disk I have here, so that's correct. And I'm going to install all files in one partition for this demo. Finish partitioning. Yes. Write changes to disk. Continue. And yes, I want to write those. Then there you go. So it's going to take some time now and it will install the base system which consists of basic utilities. And at some point the installer is going to ask me what software I want to install. So that means web server, desktop environment, and so on. So we'll just wait until this is done and I'll be back then. So for this question here, I'm not going to have another CD. So I'll click no and continue. And now it's going to ask me which mirror I want to choose for the update package manager. So I'm going to choose actually Switzerland because that's where I am and it's the closest mirror. So I'm going to choose this one with the ETH in Zurich and click continue. I don't have any proxy, just I click continue. And now it's going to configure the package manager, which might take a moment. Okay, well, one more step before. No, I don't want to participate in this survey, so I'll click continue. And now I get to choose the software I want to install. So for this demo, I'm going to choose a web server. And I'm going to choose as a desktop environment GNOME and click continue. So now the net installer is going to the internet, downloading the packages, unpack them, install them. So that might take a while and let's speed up the video and I'll be back shortly. There you go, the packages are installed. Now we have to install the bootloader. And here I'm going just to say yes, I want to install it in the master boot record. And I will enter the device name since I have only one here. So I'll just click continue. And it's going to take a moment and install the bootloader. And installation is done. So now click continue to reboot the system. And there you go. Just click enter to start the system. And there it is. That's my username. So I'll just click on that, enter the password, click enter. And that's the Debian desktop. Well, now, as you can see, it's a very small window. We'll need to install also the uh, VirtualBox guest additions. Otherwise, it's not really usable. But the first thing I want to do is to update the system to make sure all packages are up to date, which they should be since it was a net installer. So let's try that. Go to the terminal and try sudo apt update. Enter my password. And as you can see, it does not work because I'm not in the sudo file. So we'll have to do that. Uh, this is something which Debian does not take care of when we do the install. So in order to do that, I'll have to become root by typing su. Enter the password. And now I'm root, as you can see, on the left side of the command line. And I'm going to enter this command. So basically, I'm telling to add my username to the sudo groups here. There you go. Now, for this to take effect, I have to restart the system. So I'll click here and then restart. And there you go. Let's start the machine again. Click on name, enter the password. There 
there you go then again let's try it with a terminal and I'm gonna enter this command again put the password and as you can see now I can update just fine well there are no updates anyway so that's great so the next step would be to install the guest additions so that they can use this machine a little bit but the first thing we need to do before we can do that is to install two packages one is the development package and the second one is the Linux headers package so let's start with the first one I'll go here and go to the terminal and type sudo apt install build essential and there you go I'll accept the packages so I just click enter and there you go now let's go ahead and install the second one so that's gonna be sudo apt install Linux headers and this is going to be followed by basically the architecture of the computer so in this case it's gonna be AMD 64 I accept the packages now we'll be reboot the machine one time so that we have all packages in the system and there you go so I'm gonna log in again now we are ready to install the guest additions so i'll click on devices insert guest edition cd image and i get probably a box asking me to install the software which i will not do because that will probably not work i'll go instead to the files manager here click on my cd right click here open in terminal and now i can install this so i'm just gonna type it in gonna take a while to install the package and there you go now I'm instructed to restart so I'll do that and continue click my name my password and there you go so now let's have a look here under the view menu as you can see auto resize guest display is now activated that means if I go full screen by hitting ctrl F on the keyboard I have a full Debian desktop now it's everything too small I have a 4k monitor here but we can adjust this by right clicking on the desktop and going to display settings I'll bump it up to 200% and click apply that looks much better and there we go this is Debian installed so the last thing I want to show you is actually how to see the web server we installed so to do that I'm gonna go back shortly to the settings in the virtual machine and I'm gonna go under network and I'm gonna change this instead to NAT I'm gonna go to bridged adapter and I'm going to promiscuous mode I'm gonna allow all of them click OK and there you go minimize this now I'm gonna go back here full screen I'm gonna resize the screen again there you go let me go short to the terminal and I want to find out my IP address now And that's it right now. So I have 192.168.133. So I'm going to show you to the browser here. And I'm going to move this over here just a little. And I'm going to type in here 192.168 plus 1 plus 33. And that's it. That's my web server. It's working. Everything works perfectly. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tip. Um, it was a quick video, I know. If you want to see more in detail things, let me know. I can do another one. And if you have any other question, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.